So Nick and I here, we're back out in the, the great beyond, not quite the great dessert this time, but you know, close enough. And check this out. We've got a semi-intact, fairly complete stamp mill. Uh, got a small building here. I expect that this is actually upside down. Got a, a storage tank there, either water or other chemicals for processing. Let's see what else we got coming around here. It's all sort of coming down the gulch. There's a bit of a barbed wire fence here, as if that would stop us. Just gotta watch out for me nuts. Okay, here we go. So we've got a, looks like an air accumulator tank. Got a number of pipes rising up from right there, so that would make me think compressor, ah! And what do you know? There it is. Compressor and engine it's right under here. Oh, she's a wee bit buried. But not too bad looking. Good sized flywheels. Look to be about maybe four feet across. I see an eccentric rod there. Right there. So this could be steam. That would explain one of these is probably vent stack. The other one compressed air. It's possible. It's got eccentric rods on the side. What do you... Oh! Well, speak of the devil. Off over yonder we got boiler tubes. So, yeah, I'd wager she is steam. There was a, a movement, and I was researching this, on oil field engines. Where originally they were steam engines and they converted them to run on... Uh, well, they call them oil engines. Because uh, all you need is a modification of the head. You get rid of some parts and add a few others. And you can make a steam engine into a, a gas engine. So that's what happened to a lot of these mines. That would make this a very old mill. Since that's a steam engine. Before the turn of the century, no doubt. A couple knob and tube. So just to, to date things here. Knob and tube uh, ceased existence in the 30s so it's definitely older than the 30s and the steam engine would put it likely older than the turn of the century ah, damn spider webs yeah this engine oh she's mighty buried you could see the automatic oil line there this looks like the vent here this guy might have been a compression line hard to say this this roof structure that we're in here, I don't think this is how it was sitting unless it's filled to this degree. Got a, a little accumulator tank. Check out the wires there still have the tubes. A bunch of lizards running around here. And this is what we got here. A 10 stamp mill. Beautiful condition. Oh here's a uh, here's one of the eccentric rods for the ends of it. Let's see what we got here. So we got a WH Birch and Co. Builders, 129-133-135 First Street, San Fran. Five stamp. Looks like most of these are in the down position, which would indicate that the cam is likely giving up the ghost. Yeah. Yeah, she's kind of settled. And on this side, the other five, we got a good old uh, Risden Ironworks, San Fran, California. Again, cams are giving up the ghost. I believe this might be it here. Large bull wheel. You can see the line shaft set up up above. There's Nick for scale. Say hello, Nick. Hello. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, here's one of the open bearings. You can still see the Babbitt on it right along there. Beautiful, beautiful condition. Let's see if we can get up a little higher in here. I'd wager that the ore feeders are still in. Yeah, there they are. Kind of buried back in there. Ugh. Slipping and sliding. Yeah, there's your water feed valve. So the, the guy that would run the mill, he would regulate ore feeder speed, water into the mortar box, and stamp speed. All three of those had to be regulated very closely depending on the ore size to ensure that it was processed properly and you don't damage the mill. A couple more knob and tube. Beautiful. 
This is a, a really neat structure. Fortunately, she's seen better days. Let's get up on top of her. Coming along. This is the upper deck where servicing would have occurred. Nice little pan around here. See if we can make it across without buying the farm. Oh, that's spicy. Oh, that's that is. Whew. That does not give me the warm fuzzies. There we go. Yeah, we made it across. Janky as shit. Yeah, so you can see the... Uh, well, somebody actually cut this with a torch. That's why that bull wheel's down on the ground there. Although the end of that isn't cut. Hmm. Some type of foolery is going on here. Oh, I love this little catwalk out to the line shaft. Ooh. Is today the day that I'm going to fall through? Hopefully not. There we go. So they used to have uh, little oil cups up here, and somebody decided to add a grease cup. This guy here. Does she still spin? Oh. Yeah, she'll spin. She's fairly reluctant to do so. Here's the clutch for the whole system. And the clutch appears to be pretty well aligned with that engine. So the engine would drive up to here. You got a big flywheel here. Got a little flywheel there, or not flywheel, but drive wheel. And so this big one likely drove this stamp and the little one drove that one. So that would indicate that those five over there, the Risden Ironworks, at a higher torque, lower speed. This is higher speed, lower torque. And the ore bin, I'd wager, is separated so they can control the ore that is going through this, uh, which is a, it's a nifty little design. She's rough, folks, but still a beauty to behold. Something we're very happy to see. If I had the money and the time I'd dig her out, rebuild the structure, bring her back to her glory days. Anyways. So we're just a little bit above the uh, stamp mill here. You can see the columns for the mortar boxes. And coming over here, we've got two storage tanks. Oh, somebody put in like a pool, I don't know what you call this, pool ladder. My guess would be this was water to service the mill. Double overflow here. It's a shame they built this where they did in the canyon, because as a result, the whole thing is getting washed out. What a shame. Oh, check this out. Uh... Gas container off of a propane stove. Likely a Coleman. Get this exact same. Uh, well, this tank's a little bigger than mine, I think. Probably for a three burner. I got a similar stove in the truck. Nick has foretold of this building here. I wonder if we can get inside. Being up above the mine like this, <clears throat> I'd wager it's a workshop. For the mine, maybe a blacksmith shop. You got an uh, air accumulator. Oh, and a big pipe. Let's hope, let's pray, folks, that there is a, a steam engine or a compressor. Something wonderful in here. Oh, mama. Christmas has come early. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Okay, so we got a electric motor here. And this would drive this air compressor, two-cylinder air compressor. That big guy right there in the middle, that's the belt tensioner. So the belt would, would ride up under, go around, and then back towards the motor. Of course, things have made nests in these uh, windings. Here's the cover for the crankcase. 
Uh, I left my bag down the hill, but I'll go get it and get some uh, some light in here. We'll do a second walkthrough. Well, this will just be a quickie. Uh, this this building's uh, probably got three feet or so of sand and sediment in it from being washed down from above. Uh, who makes this? Is it Chicago Pneumatic? Who, who is behind this? This looks like the air intake possibly going into the cylinder. So that looks like the low pressure cylinder. There's your high pressure cylinder. So it would do a two-stage compression. <clears throat> so here's how it works. It sucks the air in, comes down, and it got a valve there by the looks of it, or maybe just a swivel joint. Goes in, this compresses it uh, just a small portion of the way. It's not, not all the way, but you know, it compresses it. And then it sends it through this, uh, I guess you could call this a, a, an accumulator tank, and it sends it into the high pressure cylinder, and the high pressure cylinder brings it all the way up to your 90 to 100 PSI that they're using for machinery. And then it's uh, up and out to the mill and to the machines in the mine. Look at the size of this pipe. Here, here's my hand for scale. That's a six inch pipe, I'd wager. Big mamma jamma. Yeah, this, they were running some pretty, pretty intense tools off of this thing to have a compressor of this scale. And so they have valves here on the side, and these are run off of an eccentric rod. It's in that little guy there. I'll come back with a flashlight. And it still has the automatic oiler, which runs to all the little oiling uh, positions. So as the engine runs naturally, it cranks on that. You can see the little connecting rod and pushes oil to where it needs to be so that you didn't have to constantly be chasing this thing with a, an oiler. Really, really cool. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, just like Schwarzenegger, I'm Bach. So, let's see what we got going on here. Now, this is very unusual. The copper windings are still in there. Do you see that? That is a, a rarity like no other. Ooh, a lot of organic matter here. This is a beautiful little motor. Open on either end. So I date her to early, early 30s, maybe mid to late 20s, roughly. This is a, a much newer addition to the mine. Uh, let's see if we can look inside the... Nah, she's caught. I don't know if there's stuff living in here, so I don't want to go sticking my fingers in. End our little mining adventure a little soon. To whatever decided to make this into a home damn you let's see yeah you can see with the phone dummy there we go okay you can see into the bearings there this could be probably general electric something like that of course all the name plates have been stolen but it looks like a, a general electric or a westinghouse maybe each of those is a possibility. Let's see, what have we got here? Are these, whoa. Is this a square D? Whoa, what the fuck? Is that a spider? Where did she go? Fuck. Well, I think that was a spider. It's gone now. Sometimes my curiosity bests me. Yeah, a little closer to things than I should. Oh, damn mosquito hawk. Okay, this is a the Trumbull Electric Manufacturing. I'll get a date on that for you guys. So this is older, older stuff. Three phase, you can see the, uh, the lines coming in there. And now let's take a look at this big beauty right here. So Nick was telling me he thinks it's an Ingersoll Rand. Uh... I always thought they were a little more rounder on the end. This could be, oh, no, no, he, he nailed it. Ingersoll Rand, Imperial Type 10. Uh, show me the money. There it is, Imperial Type 10. One of the more popular Ingersoll Rand engines ever made. You gotta let Nick know that he was, he was dead nuts into money. So, still, whoa, a beautiful amount of oil in here. If, if you had the means 
this compressor could be saved with very little effort. I mean, it would have to be removed from this location, of course, but it could be saved. It's This isn't the end. Ah, get these cover plates closed. Of course, they won't close because there's so much crap hole on the way. Let's see in there. Yeah, there's the shaft. I mean, her connecting rod, I guess, is what you'd call it. Yeah, she's a beaut. That flywheel, it's about as tall as I am, so maybe six feet across. Yeah, I wish I was six foot tall. Anywho, I'm carrying on. What have we got here? This is interesting. I didn't notice this the first time around. It looks like they got a secondary bypass pipe here off of the this manifold. This is the exhaust manifold for the compressor. I'm not sure where they're running that. It comes up into the ceiling and off into the great beyond. Oh, there's the conduit. I don't know if you can see that. That would have been the primary drop for the three phase for that, that motor over there. It, it's this is such an odd uh I don't know, there's weird things going on here. Like, for instance, they've stolen all the electrical out of the panels. And they've stolen the the coupling here for the intake. Look at that. Oh, you can see it just sucking air in there. But, like, for instance, the motor still has all of its stuff. What are these guys here? Hmm. These might be blow-off for condensate. They got a drain there. So a grease cup there. She's a little busted. So these are the these are the rods for the valves. And how would this work? So it's spin, you get your eccentric rods, and they would push these two rods here that open and close the valves. Now remember this is double acting. So the piston's going back and forth. And when it's on when it's okay, so when it's coming this way, you want this valve to be open, that valve it depends on which orientation these are these aren't single way valves i mean they're they're doing two things for instance when the piston's coming this way that valve opens it so that air from the crossover pipe up above can enter the cylinder and the uh the valve over here opens so that the air that's in the cylinder as it's coming across can exhaust into the exhaust manifold over yonder so you have to have you have to have air moving both ways and it and it reverses too so then when the cylinder re, or the piston reaches the end of its stroke as it starts going back then they reverse this guy flips so that air could be pulled in from this manifold into the cylinder and on the opposite side it pushes it into the exhaust manifold so you're it's double acting you're getting a push of air both strokes now you will get a because it's a single cylinder, you're gonna get a sort of thumping effect because it does stop at the end of the stroke and that'll be basically a dead spot where air is, isn't moving either direction. It's sort of, you know, at a standstill basically. So if you're, let's say you were running a drill and you were running at full capacity, so you're using all the air that this guy could push out, you would get a, a sort of oscillating effect at whatever frequency this guy is rotating. I don't know what the, the speed of this guy is exactly. I'll see if I can find that for you guys. Yeah, this looks like a like a blow by condensate blow by. They got a whole bunch of these these bypass pipes that go into what look like drains. So uh, this side's all all chowdered, unfortunately. People they come in, they steal all the covers and stuff. They think, oh yeah, I'll hang it on my mantelpiece. Goddamn assholes. Well, when they do shit like that. And this thing's sitting open, and you know the rats, the pine needles, all this crap gets into it, and you you've ruined a large piece of machinery can be ruined by removing small pieces. It, it's you know it's like your automobile. If I go and start pulling off little bits, I can make it so that sucker doesn't run. God, it's a beautiful flywheel. Look at the size of that. Yeah, so we're in uh, we're in the eaves of the structure. I'd wager this was easily. From the bottom sill plate to the top sill plate, probably nine feet. So, yeah, it's got about four feet buried underneath, three or four feet. Here's that automatic oiler. And you can see here, so every time that that eccentric rod moves, 
it would push on this little lever here, which is still free, and that would pump the oiler. And I don't know if these caps still open. There's a way to see it dripping so that you know that it's it's actually functioning. Um, but this guy's kind of she's a little crusty. Yeah, four different uh, different lines here. It's pretty badly buried. I don't know. Let's see if we could track down where they ran to, what they were lubricating. Um, I bet you. Ah, here we go. Okay, here's one. So we got one line right here coming up. And this was the drip for the crank here. And look at this. Okay, so you got, it would spray onto the, the, the crank itself here. And that would sort of splash oil everywhere. And then it's got this little tube here, which would also drip. And it would drip onto there, which would get to the, I guess you could call this the, uh, the crank journal or... What do you call that? Yeah, that's that's the, one of the journals for the cranks. So that that would fill up this little box here, and then that would lubricate that bearing right there. Trying not to drop my phone into the oil. Desperately trying not to drop it into the oil. So that's one of the lubrication spots. The other one. Where is the other one? It might have been this guy up here on the top, which would drip onto the the connecting rod there uh yeah let's see here there's a pipe here yeah so this is probably coming up and over like so and dripping down into here so those are the so that little oiler there and of course you'd, you'd be mirrored on the other side would oil the the crank the journals the connecting rod everything uh basically forward of the engine and there's probably an injection system because this this is a an air compressor so they'd actually pull air into the cylinders and that's how you lubricate the inside of the cylinders as they're going back and forth and it also helps lubricate the drills too which is a really nice thing so i'm not sure if there was another oiler for that that might have been on the bottom of this guy over here and as it sucked air in, it, through induction, it would probably just pull in a small amount of air. Um, again, it's hard to tell. This guy's pretty badly buried. So, really cool. That's that's my full in-depth synops here. If you have any questions, throw them down in the doobly-doos. That's super awesome. So, Nick has informed me. He's pretty sure this is the main portal, or would have been the haulage tunnel. Uh, you can see the compressor building over there. Say hello. No. Nope. Get back here, you. Nope. Oh, nope. <laughs> into the water he goes. Anywho, <laughs> unfortunately, this guy, I mean, it's it's all sloughed off there. The odds of ex excavating this. Uh, hey, Nick, you brought a shovel, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we'll just, just hop to it. Yeah, we'll remove a couple tons in the next hour or so. Hour. Yeah, there we go. Pitter patter, let's get at her. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, it's pretty gnarly. I don't know. What do you think this building here was for? Maybe just uh, it might have been a small blacksmith shop for servicing the the cars as they came out the portal. Yeah, must have had like little dwarves as blacksmiths. Well, it's <laughs> it's a little buried. <laughs> Everything here is. I, I'd say this whole area is a good three, four feet in sediment. And these large boulders, I don't, I don't know if these were here originally. These look like they may have come down. It's a big mamma jamma. Anyways, there is what looks like another portal over here. And there's the remnants of this other workshop space here. Whatever was in here is... It's buried. I bet there was all sorts of amazing things. Artifacts and such. Lost to the ages. It's a little door here. We got a portal over here, but based off a of location, this looks like it might be a, uh, ooh, that looks like it goes in. This might be dynamite storage, or it could be a bypass to get in. It's fairly good sized. Well, I'm gonna pull the light out. Yeah, let me know what you see. I wanna take a look. There was a pipe on the roof of that building that was a bypass coming off of the exhaust manifold. And I wanna see where that goes. Hmm. 
It looks like it just goes to a little blow off there on the roof. Let's see what else we got around here. There's that accumulator tank, remnants of a stove. And here is that that uh, pressure pipe. It looks like they they welded it or brazed it to the cast iron fitting here. Maybe it was leaking. With a pipe that that size, I mean, yeah, brazing it's probably the easiest. There's the intake. There's a uh, box there for the electrical. So really cool. It's a shame it's it's come to this uh, condition. The three-inch couple. Oh, sweet Jesus. Hey, Nick. A word from our sponsors. <laughs> this was sponsored by uh, Skillshare. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Please sponsor us.